Welcome to the third episode of Knitting Traditions, a podcast about knitting. My name is Inga and you can find me on Instagram as Knitting Traditions and on Ravelry as Knitting Tradition. I try to keep all my projects on both social media and the information that you might be wondering about and if you have any other questions feel free to ask, either post a comment here or on the media of choice. It's uh, Monday afternoon and I'm recording a day earlier than usual because I'm having uh, family friends visiting tomorrow. My parents were here this weekend with my brother and my boyfriend and we, we, um, we went fishing up on the mountains in the little lakes there and it was so cold, so windy we got one tiny fish to share, but it was really nice. Ooh. And I wanted you guys to meet my dog. This is Pia. She's a Cocker Spaniel and she's really snuggly. She's almost 15 years old, so she's an old lady. If she was a human, she'd be older than 100 years old, right? Yeah. And, um,. Yeah, no, it was really nice. I did get a lot of knitting done, even though I had people over and it was a full house. And then tomorrow, my the family friends are visiting with their two children. Sorry about the noise, she's <laughs> walking around and coughing. <laughs> Corona. Uh, the children seems to be my biggest fans. They're actually watching this podcast, even though they don't understand English. And uh, the youngest, she goes to kindergarten and she had told them that she was visiting me tomorrow. And they asked who I was and her description of, of me was so priceless that I have to share with you guys. She said, oh, Inga, Inga, she's a doctor and she doesn't need to buy clothes in stores because she can make everything herself. <laughs> and I just thought that was so cute. Um, so the reason I'm recording today and not later in the week is because I made them little gifts and I wanted to share with you guys before I give them away. Uh, so I just used some stash yarn that I had laying around and I don't know the proportion of kids. Like, I don't know. How big are they? <laughs> Either way, I cast on this little pearl stitch thing in drops air in the off-white color and first I thought it was gonna be like a um, what's it called a, not a scarf but a, a cowl but then I realized I think it's gonna fit better for her head so I made it shorter like a headband so it's like way too small for me but maybe for a child it'll fit I don't know it's the thought that counts and for the boy, I made a cowl. And I think, I think it's big enough. I don't know if you can see. It's very simple, just three rows of garter, no, three rows of um, knit one, purl one, and then just stock in it, and then repeat for the ending and bind off. And I think it should be good for him, like it'll be a nice warm cowl for him. This I knit in some stash yarn that I bought at an outlet from Sunless Garn and it doesn't have a tag like none of them had tags so they were just like one dollar per skein kind of uh, thing you just grabbed as many as you wanted in a bag and you got to buy them for one dollar per skein basically and or no it was a bag sale so you could stuff as many skeins in a bag that you could and then you just paid for 
the bag, which was like ten dollars or a hundred kroners. So it was really nice. And I think, I think it's an alapaca. It's like quite um, soft and a little bit hairy. And I, I feel like it feels like alpaca, and it's the color is just black. So one gift for each of them. And what I'm wearing happens to be what this is made from the leftovers from because this is the turtle dove sweater Ooh, and it's getting warm from Espace Tricot it's knit in drops air it's the cheaper version of the sweater because I think the original is in Brooklyn Tweed is that the yarn? Hmm. either way I knit a uh, I think I knit the small or the medium, at least, I think it was the small, but they have a sort of uh, bat wing raglan on the design. Um, and as I got down, and I still had like six rounds of increasing, I realized that I didn't want the armpits to be any lower, because then when you put on a sweater, it lifts up the bottom and I didn't want that because it gets cold and I wanted this to be like a super snugly warm soft cloud so I just decreased really quickly down here and in, instead of having like two stitches under the armpit I had like six or eight stitches under just to like speed up the process and it's a free pattern. Um, I'll link it below in the description box. They have so many beautiful sweater patterns and they're free. I don't know why they're free, but it's really nice of them. So sorry, <laughs> when on call the phone can call whenever. Um, so this sweater, it's uh, a split hem. You can choose between two options, either a rolled hem or a split hem. I chose the split hem that's longer in the back and there's also arms without um, sleeve decreases with a twisted rib on the arm and there's also a twisted rib down here and what I had to do to prevent it from scrunching up like this is that I just ironed out the bottom to make it um, fit more easily Anywho, works in progress. I cast it on the Vertices Unite by Stephen West in the last, or before the last episode. Um, it's from the Shawls book from him. And I mean, everyone I feel has knitted the Vertices Unite, so it was my turn. And in the last episode, I had started section two there's uh, six sections and now i'm on the fifth section and you have to keep needles or, or two of the sections you you keep on hold and um i didn't find another pair of uh, needles for the second section so i have them both um on one so it's all scrunched up but this is the first section knit in Al Kausel green from Malabrigo and the golden is honeycomb from Wishbone Solo which is a silk and merino mix and then the second section is the white color is Grenouille in Owl Feather and the other one is called Caramel from Wishbone and I'll, I'll put all the, the details below I also put it in the last episode so if I forget to put it below it's, it's in that one the third section which is my favorite section eee! okay it's, it's kind of fading out this is, this is more accurate. This warm, nutty brown is called um, Medler, and it's also from, from Wishbone. Yes. 
and it's 100% merino and it's it's lovely I love this color hmm it's, it's just it's everything and then you the then you cast on or you pick up stitches for the fourth section which is the caramel color again and then the section I'm working on now the fifth section is um, owl feather together with the honeycomb and it's gonna be a large shawl I mean now this point is together it's not supposed to be but I don't think I would have wanted it any smaller I mean I'm still missing the sixth section here but I don't know big shawls is everything if they're too small they're not warm and it gets really cold and I'm not a warm-blooded person. Whew, maybe you don't believe me right now because I'm sweating inside because I have the oven on and I'm wearing wool. But usually I'm really cold. Maybe I'm also nervous because I'm talking to myself on camera. But I have one more work in progress. And it's a pattern by the lovely uh, Melody Hoffman she's also known as B Mandarins she has her own vlogcast or podcast or whatever you want to call these videos and she's so peaceful and she goes um, into nature and she picks mushrooms and dries flowers and she lives in France with her husband and daughter and she just has a really nice aesthetic I think and her patterns are also really beautiful. I just, she recently had a sale where you could buy, I think, four, four patterns and get one for free. So I did, but really, I just wanted these. Um, this is her pattern. Um, it's actually a simple sock. I realized that she knits her heels the exact same way as I do, with a little garter edge of three stitches. And um, it's a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to say too much, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm making these little things. Um, it's a bit more time consuming than just knitting around because, of course, any pattern that's not just stock knit takes a little bit more time. But I think it's really meditative, meditative and I think this first stock is almost going to be done. Even though I'm really tall, I have tiny feet, so sometimes I wonder how I keep my balance and really I don't always keep my balance. This summer I broke both my elbows because I stumbled in my own shoelaces, so <laughs> tie your shoelaces. That's the, that's the message from today. Um, the yarn that I'm using, this lovely mustardy color is a regia a regia premium merino yak uh, a four ply color and it's 58 percent merino 28 polyamide and 14 percent yak so it's surprisingly soft and warm i didn't think it would be because of 28 percent polyamide i don't really like plastic in my yarn but sometimes you just gotta have it it's really good for durability so in socks it's fine and i thought the yak would make it not durable but i think it's holding up pretty nicely and the name of the pattern mm, i don't really remember i can't remember the name on top of my head but i'll put it in down here when i'm editing the video so I have one more sock to make and I think I'm gonna have enough left over for maybe a pair of ankle socks and then that's all that I'm making. So two current whips and two finished objects and what else? It's uh, getting more and more beautiful outside, everything is turning orange and yellows and reds and I want to go hiking before the snow settles there is a little 
cabin that's open for everyone. It's like a day trip. You walk up, takes maybe an hour up the mountains. It's at 800 meters above the ocean level, so it's pretty far up, but you can also drive a part of the way. So I want to maybe try and get that done this week in between my my shifts, my on-call shifts. Um, but we'll see. I have people visiting. I'm going to take them out to see the sheep that are back down from uh, the pastures and the two horses and hopefully they're not too scared to play with my dog. She would never harm a fly but the kids are small so maybe they get scared. We'll see. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, nothing makes me happier than to see people liking my videos, commenting, coming back to see another episode. I'm doing this for one reason to document what I'm making and and keep track of everything but also I just I want to reach out to people. I want to be a part of the knitting community more than just a silent watcher because I watch a lot of episodes, a lot a lot of um a podcasts, knitting podcasts. Um but I I just want to be a part of the community and give back and everyone is welcome here and I hope that you enjoy the content and don't hesitate hesitate to ask me any questions or if you want me to talk about certain topics just go ahead feel free and um, please subscribe that would make me so happy and um, I'll see you all soon bye Thank you.